Well, again, welcome to Football Media Day 2015. We're so glad that you could be with us this afternoon. I'm Dan Hammer from Midco Sports Network. We're going to hear from head coach Bubba Schweigert and his coordinators in just a bit. Uh, basically, today, the curtain opens to the 2015 season. Players are reporting today, and Coach Schweigert and his staff and his team will be on the field Saturday morning for their first practice of fall camp. You know, when Coach Schweigert and his staff uh, came in in brisk fashion in the late stages of December of 2013 and January of 2014, it was a fast timetable. And yet you could feel the excitement within the community because of the trust that uh, the community members put in Coach Schweigert and the staff that he assembled. And that turned into a season of turnaround last year. In many ways, it was a turnaround season for a program which had struggled a bit prior to 2014. Last season, five and seven, three and five in the big sky, closing out the season with back-to-back -back wins, knocking Northern Arizona out of playoff contention in the second to the final week of the regular season, then following that up with a win over Northern Colorado to end the regular season, and energy and momentum was carried into the off season. Defensively last year, amazing strides under head coach Schweigert and uh, defensive coordinator Eric Schmidt and his staff. UND's defense, one of the most improved in the nation, the most improved in the big sky. It was a defense that led the big sky in total defense, led the big sky in rushing defense, and led the big sky in tackles for loss. That disruptive style of North Dakota defense returned last year. It was amazing to see the turnaround in one season defensively when you take a look at the number of tackles of losses which doubled prior to 2014, the number of quarterback sacks which doubled prior to 2014, and the number of recovered fumbles which nearly quadrupled from 2014 to 2013. Offensively, last fall the team got better as the season went along. They were hit with injuries at every major skill position. Injuries at the quarterback position, the running back position, the wide receiver position, and the tight end position. And yet, over the final five games of the season, Paul Rudolph's offense found its rhythm. It averaged 170 yards rushing per game over the final five games, thanks to an offensive line that played well and has three returning starters coming back for this season. 2015, you know, when Coach Swigert uh, took the helm, he and his staff quickly adopted a theme and it's a theme that uh, they continue to carry over to this season. That is, as Coach Swigert says, develop who we want to be and what type of team we want to be. And the foundation, the initial building blocks of that foundation were laid last season in 2014, and they look to continue to build on those building blocks in 2015. Seven starters returning on defense, including five of the top six leading tacklers, Six starters returning on offense, as I said, including three along the offensive line, led by Brandon Anderson, who's just been Mr. Steady in his career at UND as he enters his senior season. He has started 33 of the 34 games he's played at North Dakota. The season kicks off with a road trip to Wyoming on September 5th before the home opener against Drake on September 12th. Notable uh, items on the schedule this year, of course, the game against Wyoming will pit Coach Schweigert and Coach Schmidt against a couple of coaches that they uh, schemed a lot against in the Missouri Valley Conference when they were coaching against uh, Coach Bull, Coach Vegan when they were at North Dakota State. The home opener against Drake is the Potato Bowl. NDSU, back on the schedule, thankfully, all, all the fans want it. It's the game the people want, and it's back on the schedule on September 19th. Other notable home games, including Montana State. For the first time since North Dakota joined the Big Sky, Montana State will be here in the Alaris Center. So it's an exciting season, exciting time of the year. Anytime football camp opens, you start leaving the trail of summer behind you and you start forging ahead to fall, and it's an exciting time. So without further ado, I want to introduce in his second season as the head coach of North Dakota, Bubba Schweigert. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here today. It's, uh, as Dan said, an exciting time of year. I just uh, love this uh, time of year and appreciate 
Dr. Kelly coming out today, the leader of our university and our number one fan, and we're going to have a lot of fun on those road trips again this year, and great to have you here. Uh, first thing I want to do uh, is introduce our football staff. Uh, Nate Bockel is here, the strength and conditioning coordinator. Adam Lofgren, uh, one of our assistant strength coaches, is here. Uh, Eric Schmidt, defensive coordinator. Paul Rudolph, offensive coordinator. Sean Kostic, special teams coordinator and tight ends coach. Luke Knopf, offensive line coach. Jordan Geely, defensive line coach. Dan Freund, wide receiver coach. Kevin Maurice, running back coach and our recruiting coordinator. Joel Schwensfire, outside linebacker coach. And Marty Rogers had to run, but he is our uh, defensive back coach. If you guys need to speak with him, you'll be able to catch up to him a little bit later. Uh, did I miss anybody on the staff? I'm trying to think I got everybody there. Also, we have uh, some of our administrators here, and they play a part, in, uh, a huge part in getting our uh, student athletes up to date with all compliance work and enrollment papers, admissions, whatever. Uh, we can think of their big help to us, Director of Academic Ser Services, Amanda Hajdu, Director of Compliance, Kara Helmig, and Senior Women's Administrator, Daniela Earl. Thanks for coming. Also want to thank our media relations staff that is here, Ryan Paul, Mitch Wigness, and Jason Hajdu. Appreciate all their efforts. Going to be brief in my comments. Uh, today and let the coordinators talk a little bit more. Uh, we will have 95 reporting to camp, and uh, out of those 95, we will have uh, 28 newcomers. 25 will be high school seniors that are entering their first year of college and three transfers, and we add that with the six transfers that were here in the spring, so we have a lot of new faces yet, and that's a, uh, we look at it as a big challenge, and we welcome those newcomers, and get them into the fold and build that team chemistry. And as always, our number one concern, you know, and I, I know we're going to get questions about certain opponents and all that, but as we enter fall camp, our number one concern is UND and our team. We aren't going to waver from our expectations and the accountability, responsibility that we teach to our guys. It, it just remains the same from year one to year two. And it's all about how we conduct ourselves. If you want to be a a championship team and build a championship team you got to be a champion on campus in the community in the classroom on the practice field it just doesn't happen on Saturdays so we work very hard at that and and uh, preach that to our team day after day I was asked earlier what's your team motto this year hey it's still day by day be who you want to be and Dan mentioned that I think our, our guys understand who we want to be on defense, who we want to be on offense, who we want to be on special teams, and we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We're going to work on it one day at a time, keep developing who we want to be, and uh, keep betting, getting better at a little bit of something, a little bit better each and every day. You heard about how many starters we have returning, how many lettermen we have returning, and uh, we got six seniors here today. All jobs are open. We know that. You've got to earn your spot every spring, earn your spot every fall. We just think that's the best way to operate uh, our program. So our guys uh, at 4 o'clock today, our first team meeting, are going to hear a lot about that. That's the challenge out there, to keep earning everything you get and really that blue-collar mentality. The product we put on the field, it's got to just be oozing with effort and passion how you love to play this game. I just It's the only way to play this game. It's a great team game, but we really, when people come to watch us play, we really stress that. They should look out there and see great effort, great passion, and a lot of enthusiasm. I will share with you uh, Russell Wilson. I'm a Twitter guy now. Can you believe that? Um, Russell Wilson tweeted last night, enthusiasm is contagious. And I couldn't agree with him more. It really is. And so is effort and so is passion. And that's what we're looking to see from our team when we get out there uh, Saturday morning. And 
each and every practice after that, and then hopefully we put a great product out on the field in those Saturday afternoons and compete uh, for successful scores. At this time, um, we're going to bring up uh, Eric Schmidt, our defense coordinator, and he's going to give a few thoughts on the defense. So here's Eric. I just want to thank everybody for coming once again today. It uh, means a lot to have a lot of different uh, people here today. Uh, it's an exciting day. It's kind of like opening day in baseball. Um, definitely not the start of our year. You know, our guys started way back with, with Coach Bacco and his staff uh, in the winter season, but it's good to get all the guys back in town, and it'll be exciting Saturday morning when we start practice. Um, I think our guys, um, starting with Coach Maurice uh, and the recruiting part of it, have really worked hard as a staff to – improve our roster, and then also to develop the guys that we have on campus. And, you know, with those new guys, I know there'll be a lot of questions about them, but you really don't know what you have until, you know, a couple weeks into the season. Um, you know, guys start getting tired, they start getting sore, and then character and toughness and all those other factors start coming out. So we feel like we got some returning guys here that we know what they're about, and now we're really excited to see, uh, you know, some of the other guys that we brought in and what they're all about. Uh, touching a little bit on our roster, um, starting out with nose guard. Nose guard's a, a real important position for us, obviously, in the 3-4. Um, it's something that we feel like uh, we need to get a guy in there that can be a dominant uh, player for us. Uh, coming back here, uh, Kyle Woodsmall is probably our most reliable guy a year ago. Uh, he got hurt, uh, I think, after his fourth start. And, uh, you know, he's a guy now that we're going to definitely count on here this fall. Uh, Tank Harris, obviously a guy, a guy that has the right name. Uh, to play nose guard, now we'll see if he has the right game, you know what I mean, to play that position. So uh, he's a guy that uh, we're really looking forward to. He had some, uh, some injuries as well uh, last year coming into fall camp. And then we have two young guys, um, Steve Greer and Logan Alm, that will have an opportunity to play young uh, early on in their career. So that is one position that we are going to evaluate hard. We feel like it's really important for us that we solidify that spot moving into the season. Uh, at defensive end, we have three guys that all played a lot of snaps for us last year. Brandon Dranka, uh, Drew Greeley, and Alex Carruthers, or Alec Carruthers. Those guys have all uh, played a number of snaps for us, uh, started games, all that kind of stuff. So we feel good about those guys moving on. Um, we have uh, another guy that played snaps, Noah Johnson, a transfer. Uh, he played at Sac State uh, with Coach Geely uh, a couple of years back, so he's played in our league. And then uh, we have some depth guys, too, that we're really looking forward to seeing how they do. They've been in our program for a year now. They developed guys like Austin C. Slack, Nick Schmitz, um, and then five new guys at D-line. That was a position we really felt like we needed to stockpile guys there for uh, what we wanted to do. So I think some of those young guys, even at that spot, can help us be better uh, pass rushers, can add some depth to, uh, to our roster. Linebacker is probably the most experienced position. Uh, at outside, we got four guys that played. Uh, and played a lot, uh, still a spot that's really important in our defense as far as those have to be big play guys for us. Those got to be guys that lead us in sacks, tackles for loss, interceptions, but uh, we do have some experience back there. Add to the mix guys like um, Dylan Harmston uh, and then three new guys as well that will be on campus here uh, and get their first opportunity to be able to crack our lineup. Uh, at inside backer, we have three guys that played, uh, Will Wattell and Taz Rich. Uh, both started um, all games last year. Connor O'Brien played a number of snaps. Uh, he'll bounce around between both spots, and then we want a lot of competition, you know, especially at, at Will Linebacker right now. We're going we're gonna to really put a lot of guys over there and give them an opportunity, so that'll be uh, a good fight, a good competition for us with uh, Daquan Baker, a transfer guy from the University of Mexico, will come in, and he'll get an opportunity there as well. Uh, Dylan Bacher is a guy that we redshirted last year. has had a, a really good um, winter season and summer season with our strength and conditioning guys and really looking forward to see what he can do here uh, this fall. Uh, the other spot besides Nodes Guard where we really think that, um, you know, it's important for us to have a good fall camp is that corner. Um, corner for us is, uh, is a real important spot. Uh, we have three guys that played. We pulled red shirts on two guys last year and then uh, Chris Brown uh, started every game for us as well. So we have three guys that played a, a number of snaps. And then obviously, uh, you know, recently here we added uh, Jameer Irvin Sills, who's a guy that, uh, that's played um, at a high level, and he'll have an opportunity to come in here, and uh, we'll see what he can do. We've heard good things about Tyus Carter 
He's been here all summer uh, working out and taking classes. And, and then we have some other guys, too, as well that we feel uh, can come in here and, and compete. Guys like Garrett Bolant um, is, a, is a guy that's done a good job for us here early in his career. At safety, we have three guys that have played. Cole Reyes probably being the, most, uh, the one that's played the most, uh, but also William James, Dylan Olson are guys that have played key roles for us in the past. We took two transfer guys at semester time that both did a, a good job for us. Uh, we were able to see Juwan Johnson participate in spring ball, and, and he's, uh, he's got the right demeanor that we're looking for. And then Zach Arnell, who is now 100% healthy and, and is a guy that we think uh, has the right traits at safety. So um, that will definitely be a position that, that is important as well. But going into fall camp, I think it's really important for us at nose guard and corner. Those are two spots that we really feel like uh, you know, we need to get solidified and find the right guys, the right mix of guys there, uh, you know, working into the 2015 season. So uh, not going to talk much about 2014. Defense is really simple. It's about desire and effort. Coach talked about it, and that's what we talked about with our guys uh, last year, and uh, we reaped some, uh, some rewards because of that. But we're going to play the best guys in 2015. We're not going to play the best guys in 2014, and that's the attitude that we're taking moving forward. So thanks for coming. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll turn it over to Coach Schweigert um, next. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Coach Schmidt. And uh, I just want to say I really like the, sta the staff that we have put together and the job that they are doing to develop our guys. You know, you, uh, it was mentioned that we uh, – improve our team by recruiting, but it's also player development, and our guys are the right guys that'll take time to develop players um, from the strength staff all the way on through our coaching staff. Uh, next gentleman uh, is our offensive coordinator that will address you, Paul Rudolph. Um, he'll come forward, talk about the offense, and uh, we're really looking forward to year two. I will say I think it's always uh, a bit more challenging on the offensive side of the ball, getting a system implemented than on the defensive side of the ball. There's just so many more things that have to click to uh, execute on offense than there is on defense and that. And uh, really happy with what our offensive staff has done to move our, our team forward and in a positive direction. Here's Coach Rudolph. Uh, thanks, guys, and I too would echo. Just uh, we we sure, certainly appreciate everybody stopping out. Um, I'll just give you a quick rundown. There's no secret, man. We 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 haven't changed. We're not going to change. Uh, we want to run the football and establish that without question. Uh, we want to run the football, control it, and uh, you know do the best we can to protect the defense and put them in great position to go out and make plays and give us field position back. Um, I'll start with the O line because everything starts there. Um, you know, those guys played pretty hardy. Um, in the spring, we tried to create some depth. Um, that group needs to be good for us. Um, there's, some, there's some guys back, Brandon, Sean, uh, Colton, Boas, uh, both played a lot, of, all three played a lot of football for us. And, you know, we'll need a handful of other guys, A.J. Stockwell, uh, Dan Bell, Brandon Miller, uh, Mac Cox, a couple of those guys. Those guys are going to have to play good football for us. But uh, we put a lot of emphasis in those guys, and, and um, we're really counting on those guys to come through, and it's a good bunch. Um, if you ever just want to just go back to the salt of the earth, people hang out with those guys because um, they'll bring you right back to how it's supposed to be. Um, with that, the next group in line is the tight ends and fullbacks, and um, you know we got a good, a good bunch of tight ends. Uh, um, Zach Adler, who played a lot of football for us, a, a very good blocker. Um, you know, one of those guys that, that catch, catches the football for us also, but just a good darn good blocker. Um, and we'll need him to continue. And Luke Matthewson, those guys played a lot of football for us last year. We have a couple other tight ends that played some uh, coming back from injury and some younger guys there. But uh, really, we need that group to be good. Um, probably the, one of the biggest parts of that tight end fullback is we've got to find a fullback who can be that third guard, if you will. Um, that's going to be a big challenge for us. This, In my opinion, in the fall, I see that as one of our biggest biggest needs, biggest concerns. However you want to look at it, I think that's, a, that's going to be a vital spot, and we're going to see who's going to rise to the top, and uh, uh, we're going to throw a couple guys in there, Zach included, and uh, there's few, probably a few guys that don't know they might get a look at fullback that are going to get a look at fullback, but we need to find that guy 
that's going to really step up to the plate and get after people. Um, but really the heart and soul of our offense comes from that group, from the tight ends, fullbacks, and the O-line. Um, those guys are the guys that's got to come and be smart, tough, and physical every day. Um, they have to be that way. I think the biggest next step, <clears throat> if our offense is going to improve, is, is going to be the play of our wide receivers. Um, and Coach Schweigert has said it numerous times throughout the year last year, throughout the winter, throughout the spring. But we really judge our offense based on the toughness and physicalness of how our receivers block. And um, it couldn't be said any better. And I think as you watch, if you watched the last handful of football games, you found a group that started to buy into being them tough, physical guys that will get after people and block. And in the spring, we, we, uh, we saw some of that, man. I think those guys, if they can continue to improve, um, that will really help us. Um, I think that's the biggest, next biggest step we take is the play of that guy. And, you know, guys like Josh Seibel, who, uh, you know, somewhat epitomizes what you want to be, a guy who was joined the team in the spring, um, started at DB, uh, didn't start at DB, but initially played at DB, um, didn't really play, looking for a spot. We move him over to wide out about, uh, you know, two weeks in advance of this year. And um, five, six weeks into the season, he leads us in receptions, you know, so... But he also goes out and gets after people in the blocking game. He just plays the game with a good passion, and, and that's, a, that's going to be a big test for our receivers is to find that competitiveness, um, that toughness. And I think, I think the other thing that you'll see from that group or that we need to see from that group is, is an efficiency rating in our passing game. We've got to catch the football better. Um, we've got to get open a little bit better. Um, but I think that group holds the key to how much we really improve throughout the course of this season. Um, you know, and then the running back spot, um, we're really unproven, you know, in all honesty, we're unproven. Um, Juwan Arrington came in, he showed us some flashes. He's a big, strong, he's the type of running back that we'd, he's a big, strong, physical guy, and he showed us flashes. But at the same token, he ain't carried a ball yet for us. Um, you know, he's got a lot to prove, and we've got a lot to learn about him in the next couple weeks. Kyle Norberg is another guy that we watched, or you guys, we all watched, and um, he showed flashes also, that big, strong guy, and he showed flashes of being that good, tough runner. Um, but we need him to rise above things with some consistency level. Um, I think those two guys and then, a, and then a handful of freshmen, I think it's safe to say that one of those freshmen is going to have to help us in the backfield, um, and we're going to need one of those guys to do it. But I think it still rests with those front two, you know, Juwan and uh, – Kyle, one of those guys, or both of those guys, really need to elevate their game from what we saw last spring and, and, uh, and really give us some good, solid carries. Um, the quarterback position, you, you know, um, played three guys there last year, and they all showed some ability and, and uh, you know, chances to move the team and showed flashes of all that. I think the biggest thing with that group of guys is, is which one's going to consistently be the dude for us. Um, we saw same thing. I'll use that same. We saw some flashes we saw some productivity we saw some promise um, but we really want to see which guy's going to grab the keys and drive the car um, you know and and I think they're going to have they're, we're going to go battle and, and let's go have some fun and see which guy wins this um, you know with that being said just so that we're all on the same page leaving the spring if we were to play tomorrow we'd play Keaton Studsrud um, but with all, with all that being said also just as Coach Schweiger said, man, you got to come and you got to compete every day and you got to keep winning that job day after day. And that's the guy we want driving the car then. Um, you know, we're going to, same thing I'll leave with you is uh, we want to be a smart, tough, physical football team that runs the darn ball, controls it. But for us to really improve and take the next step, it's going to continue to run the ball, but we got to take that next step in the play action and drop back game. Thank you. <clears throat>
you know, I, I guess I'm, my group's different from the perspective of that, you know, all the faces are going to remain the same. We really don't have any newcomers at the specialist position, but, you know, this time last year, we're, you know, we're getting ready to go into our first camp with three true freshmen at specialist, and there were some growing pains with that. Um, I, I think they handled themselves pretty well, but we've got to keep developing them and keep uh, getting them to grow a little bit, but it feels good to return at least a little bit of experience in that area. We'll start with... Uh, Going through who those people are, Jacob Holman um, is, is a snapper. He'll be back for us. There's also others on the team who play different positions that will work um, and try to get better and add some depth to that position. Uh, Reed Tobenheim returns at kicker. Um, Connor Bullduck will return as a punter. And Mitch Mindell will continue to actually work both positions. He's a, a versatile guy, and we'll see where he can have value and, and what he can bring to the team. Um, Returner-wise, it's very similar to last year from the standpoint is that there's a lot of good candidates um, for that group and we're just kind of sort everything out and see how they can compete and you know if, if you remember Alex Tillman came in about this time last year and you know it's, it's really a similar situation there so we have to see how that plays out so you know just like coach said re-echo that one more time all jobs are open you know I don't want anybody to feel comfortable you know I want to make it as competitive as possible and see you know see who can rise. Um, goals everybody talks about their goals week to week we have eight on the special teams units um, you know, I'll spend some time summarizing just in a few categories what those are. We want to strive to win the field position battles. We probably talk about that more than anything. Um, we want to continue to give our offense short fields and keep our opponents on long fields. And if I have one gripe about, you know, the way we competed on special teams is we put our defense in some bad spots with short fields. So that's going to be a big emphasis um, teaching and going into this year. Uh, we want to challenge our specialists to outcompete the opponent specialist. You know, it's hard to get those guys competitive in games that are all by themselves, and we just look at it from the standpoint is just go beat their guy. You know, do a good job of trying to out-punt him, out-kick him, and just score more points in it. And then third, we've got to make big plays. So, you know, as we go into fall camp, the first two weeks, they'll be purely fundamental. Um, we still have a lot of new guys on this team. We probably brought in 30 last year. We'll probably bring in 30 this year, and there's a lot of people, um, not just at the specialist position, but those other positions. they they got to learn the skills of the sport and have strong fundamentals. And I think in the last two weeks, we'll get ready for our opponents. So, you know, I think I can speak for all of our coaching staff as, you know, I'm itching to get on that field. You know, we've been enjoying a long summer, one of the longest ones I've had. But I think it's, get, it's time for us to get out there and get ready to teach. So we're looking forward to getting going. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. I'd like to welcome our number one fan here, Marsha Kelly is here. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you at those games and on the trips again. That'll be great. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up uh, here and it's kind of funny when you start fall camp again and you know we had one of our alums, uh, his son is going to be a part of our team. I don't know if you guys remember Monty Shade that played in our program. He was one of those nose guards. One of the first ones we had in the 3-4 system but he uh, drove in from Missoula and uh, Monty really played the game how we want our defensive guys to play the game if you remember that and he goes gosh I'm just nervous today I get so fired up for fall and all that and it doesn't change for me a one bit and I hope our coaches all have that feeling and our players definitely better have that feeling because if you don't have that going into fall camp you got to find something else to do because this is I mean this is really awesome to get this opportunity to be part of college football and and just to experience those, when your guts turn a little bit, it's really neat that you can do it. And uh, we don't talk about age or anything. You know, our players ask me once, well, how old are you, coach? And I said, as soon as you got more energy than me, I'll tell you, okay? <laughs> you know, so um, that's what we want to do. We want a great energy and want to coach our guys hard, but the right way. And we're really looking forward to this season. Are there any general questions that anybody would have before we uh, get Dan back up here about the team or anything? All right, thank you very much. And Dan, come on back up. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Swigert and Coach Schmidt, Coach Rudolph, and Coach Kostich. Uh, I'd like to introduce the student athletes who are joining us today. And gentlemen, as I introduce your name, if you would stand and then please remain standing until I'm finished introducing. We have six student athletes with us today. Senior linebacker Dial Ito. Dial? 
Senior offensive lineman, Brandon Anderson. Senior linebacker, Will Rattel. Senior cornerback, Chris Brown. Senior tight end, Zach Adler. And offensive lineman and senior, Sean Meehan. Gentlemen, thank you much, very much for being here today. They'll be available for interviews as well as the coaches afterwards. Athletic Director Brian Faison passes along his greetings. Brian, unfortunately, is out of town today, wishes he could be here, but passes along your greetings and thanks you for being here today as well. Do want to recognize one more person today, a man who many of you know very well, and uh, the headsets did not fall very far from Pat Sweeney. Uh, Pat will be back in the booth this fall as the play-by-play uh, -play man for the University of North Dakota Football Radio Network, and Pat is here today. Pat will be joined by his analyst, Mike Berg, and also Paul Ralston working the sidelines and uh, pre- and post-game interviews this year on the UND Football Radio Network. Thanks again for being with us today. Uh, for those of you doing television interviews, we ask that you do those with our backdrops. And uh, the sports information staff is here to assist you, Ryan Powell, Mitch Wigness, and Jason Hajdu, and getting the athletes and the coaches that uh, you would desire. So thanks for being here, and we're looking forward to 2015.